Hello guys, welcome to The Rookie Reader. I am Jennifer. It has been a minute <laughs> since I made a reading vlog. I just hit a huge reading slump for a week after week after week. Um, and I'm back. And I've got A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. I have to see if I can get this off. I don't like that Target puts stickers on the cover of their books because I want to keep my books nice. I don't always get like books. I do a lot of digital books. So um, I was lucky enough, I received a gift from a couple of subscribers on my other channel, Life in Envelopes. So shout out to Nellie Star and Ziomara. They both gave me gift cards to Target for specifically four books. So this is the first one I got with those gift cards. And um, anyways, I wanna get the sticker <laughs> peeled off without damaging the cover. Okay, let's talk about the book. So I think this book, first of all, it's huge. It's like 600 something pages, 624 pages. So normally in my reading vlogs, I read several books. This one, this reading vlog is just gonna be this one book <laughs> because it's gonna take me a while to get through it. Um, I, I believe, I started last night and I'm already 100, 116 pages in at this point right there. Um, I, so I hesitated reading this book because I read the first book in the series, A Court of Ro Wait, A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I loved it and I loved the ending and I remember thinking like I don't want anything to change. And I know that like I heard I've heard from other people that things change in this book, you know, it's, the story changes and I didn't want that to happen, but I'm ready. I'm ready to hear the next part of the story. So, I'm warning you now that when I talk about this book, I will be giving spoilers for the first book because there's no way for me to talk about this book without talking about what happened in the first book. So that's my warning. Now is your chance to log off if you don't want spoilers from the first book. Okay, so in the first book, the main character, Feyre, she was a human who was taken by a fairy back to his land because she took a fairy's life, so it was a life for a life. She had to go back. She wasn't his slave, but she had to live with him in his fairy land. And um, they ended up falling in love, and then they got trapped by this horrible, I believe she was a fairy, but she was like a stronger fairy, and she like had trapped a lot of people under this mountain, <laughs> and including these two, and they were like prisoners of hers. And anyways, the whole thing, the whole thing was great. <laughs> but Feyre becomes a hero. She saves the day. She, she, um, saves all the fairies from this evil fairy lady and um, then she's killed by her and then she's brought back to life by all the high lords. So like there's different like places like a land. This land, land is separated into different segments and there's a high lord for each segment and all the high lords gave a little bit of their magic to into saving Farah's life. That was the first book. So then it ends with her and Tamlin. Tamlin was the love interest of her, her, her love interest. They finally, they go back to his palace and live happily ever after. Or at least that's what I thought was going to happen at the end of the first book. It's kind of like a Beauty and the Beast kind of situation. Like he's, because he, he, um, he, he transitions from fairy to wolf. Is it wolf? Yeah, fairy to wolf. Anyways, so that's where we start in this book. So we're, we're there. Things are great. She's a hero. All the fairies love her. Um, but then things start going bad. Tamlin is obsessed with keeping her safe. And because of that, she basically becomes a prisoner in her own home. She's constantly surrounded by guards and uh, she has no freedom. She can't go where she wants to go. Um, she In the first book, she painted a lot and she no longer has a desire to paint because she's suffering from PTSD from what she went under, what she went through under the mountain. She went through, she was tortured and, and uh, just all kinds of bad stuff happened to her under the mountain. So um, she's going through PTSD. She feels like a prisoner. Tamlin's busy trying to do whatever he does. <laughs> I don't exactly know what he does. He's a high lord. He runs his kingdom. And there's also some like conflict war kind of stuff going on that are like trying to not go to war. I don't know. He's, he's busy. And um, sorry, my neighbor's mowing their lawn. Let's, let's, let's take a break until they're done and I'll come back and, and try to remember where I left off. 
Okay, I'm back. So, uh, so things aren't going so great for her. And when she was under the mountain, she met another high lord named Reese, and he is the oh gosh, I forgot what he is. Knight, the knight something high lord. Any anyways, the knight court. Yeah, he's the high lord of the knight court, and uh, he saved her, and they made a bargain under the mountain. Like he was kind of a bad guy in the first book but not exactly. He also helped her a lot under the mountain and they made a deal and he ended up saving her life. And in exchange for saving her life, she now has to spend one week a month with him. I believe forever. I don't know if there's a time limit on it. Hi guys, wanted to give you a quick update on the book. I'm currently halfway through the book and I've been reading the book so far. I haven't listened to it at all. I do have it on Audible, but I haven't listened to it yet. But now I'm gonna start listening to it while I work today because I wanna see what's gonna happen next. So I wanna get you caught up before I went any further in the book. So during this section that I've read since the last time I updated you, Farah has left Tamlin. Um, she, he just got worse, you guys. He got worse and worse, and he basically kept her caged in. She couldn't take it anymore. Reese came and saved her, took her back to his land, and let her, and told her, like, he's, he's, he's so good about, like, everything's your choice. Like, he doesn't tell her you should leave him, but he's like, you are welcome to stay as long as you want your choice. And she has chosen to stay, and he has introduced her to his, like, core group of, like, uh, they're his core political group, but they're also re his really good friends. There's one, two, three, four, four people <laughs> in that group. There's more, his cousin, uh, I'm gonna get all the names wrong, but there's two guys, like two warrior type guys, and like a fourth, the fourth one is a woman, but she's like ancient. Like, so their, their, um, their land is like 5,000 years old. She's like older than their land. And she's not exactly a fairy. They don't, they haven't explained what she is other than to say she's not exactly a fairy. Okay, so this is his core group of friends. And what's happened in this part of the book is she's staying with them. Um, she's getting to know them. She's learning all of their histories and backstories. She's becoming friends with them. They all have like tra tragic, horrible things that have happened to them in the past, just like her. So I think she's relating to that. And um, yeah, she's learning about the history of the land and the wars and what happened and just everything. So this is more like this part of the book has been a lot of like just building up of the relationships, building up of the history of the land and everything. And that's where we're at. And even though that sounds like it'd probably be boring, it's not. It's not boring at all. It's really interesting. So let's see what happens in this next part of the book. I can't tell if the glare, I think the glare is really bad on my glasses. So I'm going to take them off for just a minute. I might need to put them back on. So I wanted to give you an update about A Court of Mist and Fury. I'm about three quarters of the way through the book now and this last section was so boring. That's my dog Mork by the way. Um, Mork like as in Mork and Mindy. We used to have a Mindy too but now we just have a Mork. Um, anyways uh, so okay I gotta put my glasses on for this part main character is Feyre and in I'm looking at the map so I <laughs> know the location so in the first book she is taken from the human world into the spring court because the fairyland is split up into these different courts so she's taken to the spring court where Tamlin her love interest from the first book and the beginning of this book is the high lord and then Reese, he is the high lord of the night court so here is the human world, and then there's the spring court, and then the night court is way up here. So there's all these courts in between. So she's been spending a lot of time in the night court, but in this section of the book, she goes to the summer court with Reese and all of his buddies, his four friends. So Moore, his cousin, Cassian, Azriel, Amran. Amran is the one that's like this ancient creature. She's not exactly Faye. Anyways, so they go to the summer court because there's this guy. <laughs> oh, I'm escaping names are escaping me. This really bad guy that's going to be coming and he's going to take over the fairy world, destroy the human world. There's going to be war. It's going to be terrible. So Reese and his little band of friends and... Feyre are trying to save the fairy world and the human world from this guy who's this 
high king guy who's going to come and destroy everything. He's going to be resurrected from the dead and destroy everything. And um, so they go to the summer court in this section of the book because they need to get this ancient book, which will help them defeat this guy. And it was so boring. It was so boring. And I don't know if it was so boring because I was just listening to it instead of reading it. I find when I read this book. I enjoy it more than just listening to it. So I'm going to continue reading now and let's see if it gets any better. This is supposed to be the best book in the series, so I shouldn't be bored, <laughs> but I am. Okay, I have to check in with you guys. I don't like to check in like at night when like I don't have my makeup and my hair done and I'm in bed, but I just got to this part in the book and I have to talk about it. It's going to be a spoiler, so if you don't want to hear it, don't watch this part. But Feyre just found out that she and Reese are mates, which is, in this world, is like the strongest possible bond there is, stronger than marriage, than love, it's stronger than anything. And she's pissed off because he knew, like he's known for a while, and a couple of his friends knew as well. Um, and he didn't, he never told her, and she's feeling really betrayed by that because her whole thing with Tamlin is that he kept her in the dark and he lied to her and, and Reese has always been so open and honest with her and she just feels like this is a huge betrayal that he never told her this. But my thing is, I think she's being stupid. Like, it's not, I don't know, I just feel like it's not like as big of a deal as she's making it. I feel like she's like blowing it way out of proportion. So, <sighs> anyways, I just had to get that off my chest. Before I, before I go further and see where this goes, because at this point, she's so pissed off at him that, that it, I guess it's feeling like she just wants to end everything that she has going on with him. And I just feel like that's really stupid. Okay. <laughs> so she's come to her senses. So what happened was, is she and Reese were out in the world training and doing other things, and they were attacked and... Um, by and and Reese was badly injured and she saved him by trapping a surreal and the surreal is who told her about the bond and or the mate the mate bond and um that's how she found out about it so she gets him home safe and when she gets home she asks more more is his cousin to winnow her which is like take her somewhere so Moore winnows her to their family cabin where she's going to be safe and have some time to just be alone and figure things out. So while she's there, she finds a paint set and she starts painting again. So in the first book, she painted a lot. And in the second book, she's had no desire to paint this whole time. So it's the first time she's finally painting again. So she's painting all these cool things in this cabin. She's actually having some like a good time in this cabin. She's there, she's been there for five days at this point, and she's starting to come around to the idea of being the fact that being Reese's mate is actually a good thing and not a bad thing, and that maybe she overreacted. <laughs> so that's where we are. And she just heard a knock on the cabin door and opened the door, and Reese was standing there. So that's where I'm at at this point. Okay, that chapter was incredible, and I'm about to sh I'm about to share more spoilers. <laughs> so. So Reese arrived, and now he is telling her everything, explaining the whole backstory of when he knew and everything about. He just he just fills in so many gaps in this chapter, and it was I I was holding my breath, <laughs> and um. At the end of the chapter, she agreed to be his mate. We have a few more chapters to go. I think about a hundred pages left to go, but I'm done for tonight. That was a really, really good chapter. I, You know what? I needed that because I've been having such a high time with this book. This book has been taking me a whole month to read because I just don't want to pick it up. And I, sh I feel like I should because everyone says this is the best book. That chapter was good. That was a really good chapter. It makes it makes me want to go ahead and finish the book. <laughs> I almost dnf it before I started reading tonight, but I want to finish the book now. Okay, guys. Let's talk about this. So I only have about 50 pages to go, but I feel like so much has been happening in the last 50 pages that I just read that I need to catch you up on it before I last the, read the last little bit and we conclude this vlog. So last night when I left you guys, Tamlin had just shown up at the door and 
things got really steamy. <laughs> it gets really spicy for a, a big chunk. And then they go back home and um, while they're, so I don't know how much I've told you. So home, if you look at the map, so home, when I say home, I'm talking about Valeris, which is this the city that Tamlin has been protecting for 5,000 years. The city has existed, I think, for like 5,000 years, and Tamlin has been protecting it. So during the time of Amarantha, he protected it that whole time and has been able to keep all the people in his city safe. So they go back home. So they're back together, everything's good, or they're together together finally as a couple and everything's going really well. Farah is so happy, um, Reese is so happy. So they're going to meet with the human queens. I can't remember if I told you about all this that's going on with the human queens, but the whole point, this whole thing that they're trying to do, Reese is trying to prevent a war from happening. And uh, he, he believes that if this war were to happen, he, he participated in the first war like 500 years ago, and he believes if this war were to happen, like it would completely wipe out the human race. And he doesn't want that to happen because the love of his life is human or was human at one point. He just doesn't want that to happen because he's a good guy. He's, you know, he, he has to pretend to be a big, tough, might mean guy, but he's actually a good guy under the surface. So in order to avoid war, he, and Feyre have been looking for these two books. There are two halves, and they have to get these two books, put them, uh, and then they can use the two books to destroy the cauldron, and then that's gonna prevent the war. So they needed to go to the human queens to, to they needed to get the second, they already have the first half of the book. I think I told you about that, how they got that. But the second half they get have to get from the human queens, and the human queens want something in return, like, a an omen of they want like a sign of good faith because they don't believe that Reese is a good person or good fairy they don't believe that Reese is a good fairy and that he's not going to like destroy their world and attack them so they want like some sign of good faith so what he's going to do is he's going to share the fact that Valeris exists which remember is a place that has been protected for like 5,000 years and nobody knew it existed. So he's gonna share that fact with the human queens in order to get the book from them. So they meet, things don't go well, the queens are like, we'll think about it. And and the everybody at the meeting was like, we don't have time to think about it. Like this war is going to happen if we don't stop it. And um, the queens leave and the youngest queen had left the book behind her the half of the book behind so they got the book so they go back and um reese has to go somewhere for business and farah is in the city um and just hanging out everything's going well all of a sudden the city is attacked and the young human queen is thrown from the sky, impaled. She had been like beaten, her head shaved, like they, they killed her. And they are being attacked. The city is being attacked for the first time in 5,000 years. So the human queens basically betrayed them, basically. And um, she has to fight off. It's her and oh, she's not alone, but Reese isn't there. Moore isn't there. It's her and I believe. Okay, so I can't find the names and I'm blanking on the names. There's Cassian, but it's her. So, you know, remember Reese, it's Reese and more, his cousin, then there's two fighters and then the old lady, and I can't remember all their names. So there's five of them plus Faye right now. So there's six of them total. So two are gone. Uh, Reese and more are gone on business and then the rest are left in the city. So there's only four of them to defend the whole entire city. Things uh, are rough. A lot of things get destroyed. Feyre really steps up and does an amazing job. They all do an amazing job. Um, Feyre uses her water magic to create wolves out of water that like attack these guys that are attacking them and they end up like drowning them. Like they swallow them and then it drowns them because they're made out of water. She also uses her water power to make turn turn the like people were flying up ahead into ice and they're like they crash down to the ground it's, it's just really cool <laughs> it's a really cool scene so um they were managed to save the city reese and more come back and now they're going to destroy the cauldron because they can't 
they can't risk now that Valeris has been, you know, outed and they know it, people like know it exists, they can't risk it being attacked again. So they're going to destroy the cauldron. So that's where we are at this point. I'll have to let you know what happens. Okay. <laughs> so I just finished a court of a uh, court of mist and fury and I'm going to try to explain what happened. Now this is full of spoilers. Just so you know, I feel like, I feel like this whole video is probably full of spoilers. I'm gonna try to explain it from what I understand, but I could definitely have some things wrong. So, when I left you, Feyre had broken into the King of Highburn's like home and was trying to destroy the cauldron, and she was not able to do that. And then there were like all these kinds of twists and turns that happened. So when Cassian, Azrael, Reese, and more return to the city and they see Amran, they um. She says, you know, like what happened? Cause they don't have favor with them. And then more explains what happened in a paragraph. And I feel like that's going to be the best way for me to explain to you what happens. I'm going to read what, what more says. Tamlin offered passage through his lands and our heads on platters to the king in exchange for trapping Feyre, breaking her bond and getting to bring her back to the spring court. But I, Anthe betrayed Tamlin, told the king where to find Feyre's sisters. So the king had Feyre's sisters brought with the queens to prove he could make them immortal. He put them in the cauldron. We could do nothing as they were turned. He had us by the balls. <laughs> okay, so basically it was like, uh, so the king came in and they were like, uh, and he said, I'm trapped you here, you can't get out. He had put like, he had put wards up around his home so they couldn't escape. And then he said, okay, she's here, come out. And so then Tamlin and Lucian come out and Feyre's like, what? You're working with Tamlin and Lucian? And so Tamlin like is just trying to get Feyre back. So um, that's why he decided to work with the High Lord, the King of Highburn. And so he's decided to work with the King of Highburn to get her back. And, uh, but the King of Highburn, it had made a deal with the queens to make them immortal be, um, because they're the ones who betrayed Reese and told them about where the city was that, you know, they had been hidden for 5,000 years and all that. So the deal was they get immortal life through the cauldron. And then he, the King of Highburn also brought Feyre's two human sisters there. So it's like all these people were kept coming into the room and he brought the two human sisters there to turn them into immortal, turn them immortal first in the cauldron to prove to the queens that it was a safe thing to happen. So he ends up turning the two sisters. It's very sad and graphic the way it happens, but they end up becoming immortal. And then um, Lucian realizes that he is Elaine's mate. Elaine is Feyre's younger sister. So there's Nesta, the older sister, the strong bitchy one who nobody messes with. And then there's Nesta, like the sweet younger one. So it turns out that Lucian is her mate. And um, Feyre decides to pretend that she, that she broke the, that she, she like light emanates from her and stuff happens and she pretends that she broke free from the spell <laughs> that, uh, that Reese had her under. He didn't have her under a spell or anything, but Tamlin didn't believe that she was with him on her own. He believed that somehow Reese had tricked her into being with him. So she pretended that that was broken. And then she asks the King of Highburn to break the bond that, and the mating bond that they have. And he does that. Reese and Cassian and Azrael and more grab the two sisters and disappear. They winnow out because when she, when Feyre was pretending to break the bond with that light, she was actually bringing down the ward so that they could escape. So they escape and uh, Reese takes the book with him. And then Feyre, Tamlin, and Lucian end up going back to the spring court. So now at the end of the book, the bargain bond had been broken by the King of Highburn, but he wasn't actually able to break the mating bond. So Reese and Feyre are still mates, but she's pretending to love Tamlin and be with him. So she's back in the spring court. Tamlin, her, and Lucian are back in the spring, um, spring court. Lucian really wants to get Elaine, who's his mate. She, he wants to go and get her. 
So there's going to be war. There's going to be conflict. Um, this is the end of the book, so there's a, there's another book coming, and there's going to be a war. And Feyre is actually High Lady of the Night Court because there was some ceremony that she and Reese participated in the night before all of this happened, making her High Lady of the Night Court. So she's actually equivalent to Reese. So what ended up happening is that Tamlin brought in the Lady of the High Court into his home, and now she's a spy in his court. I think that's the gist of it. That, oh my gosh. Oh, that was really hard to understand. <laughs> so as far as the book goes, it's, um, I'm struggling how to read it. I mean, it's an excellent book. I just, it took me forever to get through it. I wanted to DNF it so many times. So I don't know, I definitely, I think I'm gonna give it a three, which is probably a really unpopular opinion, but it was just so hard for me to understand what was going on. And uh, I need to sit with it for a while, but I'm thinking three. Um, I, there's not many people in my life that I would recommend this book to. Um, just because the people in my life that like to read that we discuss books, it's just not their type of book. But I think this is a, a good book for people who love this genre. And I know that there are like some hardcore fans of this series and this is supposed to be the best book of the series. Um, so yeah, I think I just need to sit with it for a few days. But right now, my thought is at the point where I just finished it is that it's a three out of five. Oh my gosh, you guys. Whew. Okay, if you enjoyed this vlog, will you please give it a thumbs up? Next, my next reading vlog is I'm gonna go back to my, my true, my tried and true genres that I like. I'm gonna go back to mystery thrillers and romantic comedies. Uh, and I'm gonna just enjoy like a little relaxing break, give my brain a break from this monster <laughs> of a book. It was so, so long. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.